picture this. You're the shiny new toy, the golden ticket, the chosen one plucked from the masses to lead an NFL team to glory. No pressure, right? Just millions of fans pinning their hopes and dreams on your gridiron prowess. Ah, the 90s, the time of dial-up internet, boy bands, and some seriously epic football moments. And smack dab in the middle of it all were those lucky lads picked first overall in the NFL draft. They were supposed to be the gridiron gods, destined to rewrite the playbook and etch their names in football lore. But as fate would have it, not every tale unfolds like a Hollywood blockbuster. Some of those chosen ones ascended to the Mount Olympus of football greatness, while others stumbled over more hurdles than a clumsy track star. So grab your popcorn and strap in tight as we journey back in time to revisit the highs, the lows, and the what the heck were they thinking moments of every NFL first overall pick from the 1990s. Get ready to meet the Gridiron Gladiators and uncover the plot twists that made their careers as unpredictable as a fumbled football. It's going to be a ride more thrilling than the last second Hail Mary. 1990, quarterback Jeff George. Jeff George, originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, was a talented football player from a young age. He went to Warren Central High School where he won awards for both sports and academics. In college, he played for Purdue University and later transferred to the University of Illinois where he excelled as a quarterback. In 1990, he was chosen as the first overall pick in the NFL Draft by the Indianapolis Colts. He faced challenges with the Colts but had some success before leaving in 1993. He then played for the Atlanta Falcons, the Oakland Raiders, the Minnesota Vikings, and other teams. Although he had some good seasons, he struggled to find a stable place in the NFL. Despite this, he would later become an analyst for the NFL Network, sharing his insights about the game. 1991, Defensive Tackle Russell Maryland Russell Maryland, from Chicago, Illinois, found his love for football in high school. Though not highly recruited, he earned a scholarship to the University of Miami. In college, he became a star player winning awards like the Outland Trophy. His efforts helped Miami win national championships and bowl games. In the 1991 NFL Draft, he was picked first overall by the Dallas Cowboys. Despite not being their original choice, he became a key player, contributing to three Super Bowl wins. He later played for the Oakland Raiders and the Green Bay Packers, showing consistency and skill. After retiring, he became an advocate against racism and bullying, especially in schools. Russell Maryland's football career is filled with success, and he continues to make a positive impact off the field. 1992 Defensive End Steve Entman Steve Entman from Spokane, Washington rose to fame in football despite not being heavily recruited in high school. He earned a scholarship to the University of Washington where he became a star player under coach Don James. In 1990, he helped Washington win the Rose Bowl, and the next year he played a crucial role in their national championship victory, earning many awards. Standing at 6'4 and weighing 290 pounds, Entman decided to enter the NFL Draft after his junior year and was picked first overall by the Indianapolis Colts. Although he had some impressive moments, injuries plagued his professional career. He faced multiple knee injuries and a serious neck injury, which eventually led to the end of his playing days at just 27 years old. After retiring, Entman coached for the Spokane Shock and found success in real estate. 1993 Quarterback Drew Bledsoe Drew Bledsoe, starting his journey at Walla Walla High School, showed his athletic talent in football, basketball, and track. His skills led him to be an all-state selection and displayed his versatility. Continuing at Washington State University, he became a star quarterback, guiding his teams to victories and setting records, earning him the title of Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. Because of his successful junior year, he decided to enter the 1993 NFL Draft. Picked first overall by the New England Patriots, he became their starting quarterback and led them to many wins, including a memorable comeback against the Minnesota Vikings. In 1996, Bledsoe led the Patriots to another playoff appearance and an AFC Championship victory against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Despite falling short in the Super Bowl against the Green Bay Packers, Bledsoe's skills earned him another Pro Bowl start. However, a serious injury during the 2001 season opened the door for Tom Brady to take over as the starting quarterback ultimately leading the Patriots to a Super Bowl victory. Traded to the Buffalo Bills in 2002, Bledsoe experienced renewed energy and success, throwing for over 4,000 yards and earning his fourth Pro Bowl appearance. Despite facing challenges and injuries in subsequent seasons, Bledsoe continued to showcase his talent on the field. After retiring from the NFL in 2007, Bledsoe pursued winemaking, founding Double Back Winery, which gained recognition and success. He remains active in philanthropy, using his platform to give back to his community. 1994, Defensive Tackle Dan Wilkinson Dan Wilkinson, originally from Dayton, Ohio, gained attention for his football skills at Dunbar High School, where he was called Big Daddy by his coach. 
He continued to impress at Ohio State University, earning awards like all Big Ten honors and becoming an All-American. In 1994, he entered the NFL draft and was picked first overall by the Cincinnati Bengals, signing a very lucrative contract. He played well for the Bengals, leading in quarterback hurries and sacks. Despite his success, tensions with the team and the city led to his trade to the Washington Redskins in 1998. With the Redskins, he continued to excel, setting records and leading the team in sacks. Despite some injuries, he remained a key player until his release in 2003. After brief stints with other teams, he retired from football. After retirement, he pursued business interests. Though these efforts were not without conflict as he would face legal challenges in 2006 over a contract dispute. 1995, running back Kajana Carter. Kajana Carter, originally from Westerville, Ohio, got his unique name from the movie Shaft in Africa. In high school at Westerville South, he showed off his athletic skills in football, basketball, and track. His football talent got him noticed, and he was named a high school All-American in 1991 by Parade Magazine. At Penn State University, Carter played for Coach Joe Paterno's team, the Nittany Lions, from 1992 to 1994. In 1994, the team went undefeated with a perfect 12-0 record, led by Carter and other future NFL stars. Carter wore the number 32 and left his mark at Penn State, with his standout moment coming in a game against Michigan State in 1994, where he rushed for over 200 yards and scored 5 touchdowns. Carter's stellar performance helped Penn State secure a spot in the Rose Bowl, where he was named co-MVP. After three seasons, Carter entered the NFL Draft and was picked first overall by the Cincinnati Bengals in 1995. Carter's NFL career was unimpressive as injuries would impact his time on the field. He played for several teams before retiring in 2004. After football, Carter became a CEO, starting his own company called BioGlobe in 2008. 1996 Wide Receiver Keyshawn Johnson Keyshawn Johnson, from Los Angeles, faced tough times with gangs and the law, but his love for football helped him overcome. Starting at Palisades High School and then later Susan Miller Dorsey High School, he showed determination despite challenges. After a break, he returned to football stronger, playing well at West Los Angeles College and then at the University of Southern California, USC, where he earned All-American honors twice. In the 1996 draft, the New York Jets picked him first overall, with the Jets, he played a key role in winning the AFC East division title. His standout performance almost took the Jets to the Super Bowl in 1998. He later played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, helping them win the Super Bowl in 2002. Despite some conflicts, he found success with the Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers. Johnson retired from the NFL in 2007 and became an ESPN analyst, winning fans with his personality and football knowledge. Even though he left ESPN in 2023, Johnson's impact on football and the fans continues to be felt. 1997 Offensive Tackle Orlando Pace Orlando Pace from Sandusky, Ohio rose to NFL stardom through hard work and talent. He started playing football at Sandusky High School where he earned recognition from magazines like Parade and USA Today. At Ohio State University, Pace constantly impressed as a dominant offensive lineman. He won the Outland Trophy and became the first offensive lineman in nearly 30 years to be the top pick in the NFL Draft, joining the St. Louis Rams. Pace signed a lucrative contract with the Rams and helped them win the Super Bowl in 1999. Despite some injuries and contract issues, he remained a top player, being named a Pro Bowler seven times. After leaving the Rams in 2009, Pace played one more season with the Chicago Bears before retiring. He later opened a restaurant in Sandusky called Big O's LTD, staying connected to his hometown. In 2015, Pace was named a finalist for the Pro Bowl Hall of Fame, and next year, in the next year he was elected, cementing his legacy in NFL history. 1998, quarterback Peyton Manning. I'm sure you really don't need a recap on the career of Peyton Manning, but here we go. From New Orleans, Louisiana, Peyton started his football journey at Isidore Newman High School where he led his team to an impressive record. He earned awards like the Gatorade Player of the Year. Despite many college offers and a family legacy at Ole Miss, Manning chose the University of Tennessee to become a volunteer. There he set records and won awards, becoming one of the best college quarterbacks ever. His achievements led to his jersey being retired and a street being named after him at the university. In the 1998 NFL Draft, Manning was the first overall pick, joining the Indianapolis Colts. He had an impressive career with the Colts, winning MVP awards and being named to the Pro Bowl more than a dozen times, and setting records for passing touchdowns and yards. While criticized for his playoff performances, Manning eventually won two Super Bowls, one with the Colts and one with the Denver Broncos where he finished his career. After retiring, Manning stayed busy with his show Payton's Place on ESPN Plus and hosting the Manning cast with his brother Eli during Monday Night Football. His impact on football was celebrated with his induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2021. Manning's legacy as a football legend is forever remembered and continues to be recognized. 
1999 quarterback Tim Couch. Tim Couch, born in Hyden, Kentucky, gained fame as a record-breaking high school quarterback, earning the title of Kentucky's Mr. Football in 1995. ESPN even ranked him as one of the top high school athletes ever. Couch continued his football career at the University of Kentucky, where he set numerous records and led the team to success under Coach Hal Mummy's pass-heavy offense. His impressive college performance earned him recognition as one of the top players in the SEC. Drafted as the first overall pick by the Cleveland Browns in 1989, Couch became their starting quarterback as a rookie. Despite it leading the team to a playoff appearance in 2002, he struggled with injuries and inconsistent play throughout his career with the Browns. After his release from the Browns in 2004, Couch attempted comebacks with other teams, but faced challenges due to his shoulder injuries. Despite his efforts, he would retire from professional football. Transitioning into sports broadcasting, Couch worked as an analyst for Fox Sports South, covering SEC football. In 2018, he returned to the Cleveland Browns organization as a commentator for their preseason games, continuing to stay involved in football even after his playing career ended. Well, hey there, folks. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. We know there were so many twists and turns, right? From record-breaking quarterbacks to dominant offensive tackles, the 90s first overall picks certainly had those things and uh, not much more. And then there's Tim Couch. Poor Tim, drafted first overall by the Browns in 1999, hoping to bring glory to the dog pound. But hey, things don't always go as planned, right? Despite some ups and downs, Tim's still out there, keeping the football spirit alive as a commentator. Maybe one day, he'll lead the Browns to a Super Bowl victory, in the broadcast booth at least. So until next time folks, keep cheering for your favorite teams, and who knows, maybe one day we'll see your two-win team draft the next Peyton Manning. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more NFL content. And if you want more, check out my recent video on the tight ends drafted before Travis Kelsey. I forgot Jordan Reed was in that draft class.